So, let's get to your questions. We're going to go to question one. How can one turn this into success? When there is no interest in your output from managers at work, and you're not part of the inner circle. What a great question. Let me interpret what I think is being said in the heart of what is being said. You feel like you're an outlier. You're on the outside looking in and that looks like a blockage and a lid to you helping the team make progress, the business make progress and ultimately also your progress, potentially your promotion. So how can an outlier make progress? And I think what happens is when we come into a situation like this where we feel like we can't get in on the conversation that ultimately is going to create the shift, produce the results, then fear can set in. And the fear can then be, okay, my future now is in the hands of other people. We feel like we've lost control. And then that leads to a hopeless state. But let me take you through, and I use this in the winning conversation. It's important that we we don't start with with what is happening. And we also don't start with how we're feeling. What we have to start with is principle. So what is the principle for promotion? Because ultimately, the, the question is suggesting that, that ultimately there is a blockage to promotion. And, and I'm not saying that the, you know, the, the person is only concerned about their promotion. They want to just play a value part in seeing everybody be promoted in terms of making progress and moving to the next level. But of course, synonymous with that is our own personal progress. So what is the principle for promotion? Well, again, let's go to the Bible because that's the principle that, that drives us as high performance disciples. So the principle for promotion is this Psalm 75 verse 6 to 8. For promotion and power come from nowhere on earth, but only from God. He promotes one and deposes another. Now, that's a great place to start. Because immediately if I submit how I feel beneath the principles of God's word, then when my state is feeling hopeless and I feel like there's an earthly blockage, the great news is that earth is the second creation of everything that is. Ultimately, everything starts in the physical realm in the unseen. And as this passage suggests and tells us, that ultimately promotion and power that is seen on earth doesn't come from what is seen. It comes from the unseen. It comes from God himself. So the great thing is people, even though they may have the positions of power and the roles that that look powerful, ultimately they are not the ultimate promoters or demoters. Okay, God is. So God holds your future and that can start to ignite faith. Okay, and that's an important starting point. So the principle of promotion is, my promotion is in God's hands, not man's hands. But then we move from the principle, which is the, you know, the who, that's God, to the purpose. Okay, the purpose. So the purpose for promotion. Colossians 3.23 says, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. So again, what this does is it really challenges our motivation. It starts to maybe correct as we all are prone to falling into being motivated by our own promotion. Now, I'm not suggesting that that's the case for the the person asking the question, but it's always important for us to weigh our motives. We know that from when we read Proverbs. So the purpose for promotion, you see, As human beings, right from when we're we're children, okay, our sinful nature um, wants to be seen. You know, I need to be seen. And that comes from the fact that our self-image has been damaged by sin. So I need to be promoted in order to be seen because that's where my value and my worth is. That, of course, is typical and common 
and that is our default. But the purpose from our, for our promotion is not that we are seen. And also, let me give some really good news here, because ultimately, as followers of Christ, our promotion has already happened. The fullness of what God has for us and the assignment and task that God has for us has already been completed. You know, we know in, in uh, Ephesians 2, that 2.10, we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which he prepared in advance for us to do. So here's the thing. I want to be, naturally, I want to be seen in order to be promoted right now. Problem is, nobody's seeing my work. Nobody's seeing my output. I don't feel like I'm part of that inner circle. So how am I going to make progress? But here's the shift. I am already promoted. Therefore, I will be seen. Now, notice the difference. You may say, but Gareth, nothing's changed. I'm not part of an inner circle. Uh, there's no interest in my output. No, but there's a shift in what you believe. And there's a shift in, in, in the purpose for promotion because ultimately my purpose for promotion is that I work for the Lord. And I work for the Lord, therefore he will take care of the promotion. My focus is on the work and to work hard for God because ultimately he is the one that sees and he is the one that promotes. So the fact that these people don't see is not going to stop my promotion because God sees and he's the one that promotes. So therefore, the purpose for my promotion is, is that I get to keep on working for God. That's the purpose. It's not about me. It's about him. Therefore, as long as that's my motive, that he is seen through what I do, then he will open those doors at the right time. But start to believe right now, I am already promoted. I am already promoted. I'm already at that next level, even before it's actually happened, because the work of Christ is the complete work of Christ. And then we move from principle to purpose to priority. What is the priority for promotion? James 4, 6 says, God opposes the proud but shows favour to the humble. God opposes the proud but shows favour to the humble. David is a great example of somebody who was promoted and his root to promotion should inspire us. David didn't prioritize focusing on promotion. He prioritized on being prepared. You know, David built the personal strength of character in obscurity when he was looking after his father's sheep and cattle. His character was being developed out of the limelight. And of course, we've got the other extreme of Saul, who lacked personal strength and personal character, but was in the limelight. And of course, we know Saul, ultimately, his character couldn't carry the role and responsibility that he had. It, in fact, his role and responsibility ended up destroying him. But David comes through, and because his character was developed in obscurity when nobody was looking and right now you know the person who's asked this question it may feel like you're in a period of obscurity when it comes to your current work situation but right now your priority is to build personal strength in that obscurity and to prepare yourself to work hard as you work hard i'm sure already but knowing that you're doing it for God, knowing that he's the one that promotes and he's the one that deposes. And then, of course, the practice. In other words, you know, what then does that look like as an actual um, uh, set of actions, something that I can go away and do? Proverbs 21, 31 says the horse is made ready for the day of battle, but victory rests with the Lord. And there are two sessions right now in relation to this question that can build on the answer that I'm giving. First of all, in our winning leader track, which is a Christian track that we've got in the program, there's a session on credibility, which is building a reputation that opens doors. So what I can do is prioritize right now building credibility. That's what David did. He built credibility. And ultimately, it was David building credibility as, as the harpist to Saul. 
remember David was was one who played the harp for Saul as a you know to essentially help Saul deal with the demons that he was experiencing he was dealing with the uh, kind of this uh, uh, oppression and when David played the harp it it was it was soothing to him and so David built credibility with Saul in something completely different to when he stepped on the stage to fight Goliath but building credibility is allowing the character to shine through from a place of humility okay humility is quiet strength quiet strength and so i really recommend going and looking at that session on on credibility building reputation that opens doors and then there's another session and this is in the winning momentum program uh, under the high performance cycle and this is part of program in high performance disciple membership which is is uh, not an overt faith uh, session but it's a session that i use uh, with people in different uh, pathways and this session is called how can i get people to buy into me okay how can i get people to buy into me and then one of the lessons that i teach through that is is focus on service focus on service okay and so when we focus on service our gift opens the way for us then to give as proverbs says and so again i want to encourage you go, go and look at those sessions and, and and build those principles into into what you prioritize and what you practice okay and so i want to encourage you to go and to do that and and again two other places again i know i'm throwing kind of uh, content at you but that's the whole purpose of immersion we have to immerse ourselves to kind of shift those barriers right now that are in us we can't control other people but we can control the barriers that are in us and uh, in the winning conversation there are two sections section six called build a platform uh, not a soapbox there's a tension always when we feel like we're not getting people's attention that we've got to somehow shout and you know to, to somehow break through but no, keep on building that platform, build that credibility, okay? And so I encourage you, that section of the book, again, also is another helpful thing to kind of build in. And there are some key practical tools there that you can, that can, you can practice. And you know, one of the key, let me sign off with this, and then we're gonna get a, a little story as to uh, something that's gonna help us understand what High Performance Disciple is all about. But when we become somebody who gets curious with questions, become somebody who asks questions, then we can start to find out what the blockages are in people. Sometimes when we look at, particularly in this question, okay, here we've got this closed group of people of which I can't seem to get into that group and they don't seem to see me, then the, the key is to start getting curious. Start asking questions, start to understand. You know, usually when, people, when, when a group of people do that, there's high levels of insecurity. And high level insecurity actually look on the outside like they are people are hard and they have strength, but actually uh, there is weakness at the heart of that. But by asking questions, we can start to find ways that we can serve them. And one by one, I encourage you to go one by one through that group and find you know, sincerely and genuinely opportunities to serve them. And you watch how love breaks down the barrier of fear. Because love, perfect love drives out all fear. We know that James says that in, in the book of James. So perfect love drives out all fear. This group is held together by insecurity and fear. So how do you break it down? Love. Ask questions. How can I serve them? Focus my service, okay? And keep on doing that over time. And you watch how as you carry out the winning way how god promotes you okay and ultimately i know your heart is that he ultimately gets the glory so you know god will work with you well i can't wait to hear uh, please let me know how you get on in applying that and and maybe if you're happy at some point i'd love to have the person ask the question to come and maybe share a bit of a story uh, of, of what happens but that's what this is about that's the beauty of this time we can interact like this so